Hey everybody, welcome back to Havoc Maker Studio. My name is John and let's talk about Warhammer 40,000. And it will relatively be good. I don't think I'm going to be snarky or kicking a dead horse today. I mean, I reserve the right to do so. <laughs> so, um, I saw that Armies on Parade, uh, they've kind of revamped how they do Armies on Parade. And this is going to be tied into 10th edition, so just bear with me. So, Armies on Parade in the past has been um, an event where you go to your local store. It's, this is the way it started out. You, you go to your local store, you do really well. Um, it's Unfortunately, it is voting by the customers, which... Sounds like, hey, that, that sounds fair until you get to favoritism, you know, it, which I understand you get your buddies to come in and vote for your favorites, right? Totally understand that. It's not the right way to do things, but it's the, it's, it's how it's, it's how it goes. Okay. I get it. But, um, that has been going on for years. And then we had the, the hiccup with the COOF during, uh, was it 2020 to 2022 ish? And there, I think we're sending in photos for those. Um, now, starting in 2023, that well, I mean, we're already past a few of those months, they've broken down how you show it off, which in a way I think is a good thing because it really shows off a lot of your um, your favorite units, um, your, your skills on the individual level, where sometimes the looking at the whole thing you might they might miss out on um and before i go any further one of the things that they used to have is if you won locally then they took really good hopefully good took good pictures sent it into games workshop and games workshop would say okay these people are moving forward we'll have there are going to be the the overall grand finalists or whatever and then we'll pick out the best then and that went on for a very long time um, and then it's changed over the years as they kind of streamlined it, which is totally okay. So now we've got it broken down, and then the grand finale is in uh, November. So I would check with your local games workshop, maybe even with your local friendly local game store, see if there is something going on where you can reach out, they can reach out to Games Workshop, their trade rep, and go, hey, are we able to get a kit or anything for Armies on Parade? Ask them. Worst case scenario, they say no. No harm done. Uh, at any rate, it's a good way to um, not earn models and money, but you know recognition. They've got pins and badges, and or pins and uh, pin badges. Sorry, uh, they used to give out medals, kind of shaped like this. I've got quite a few. Um, pat myself on the back there. That um, they used to give those out. I don't know what they do now anymore. It'd be interesting to see how this pans out. But this brings me into my next topic, which is going into 10th edition, as we're talking about scoring for um, whatever game you're playing, whether it's a casual game, um, a crusade game, and more importantly, the tournament games. Now, this is where I've got a previous video on. I'll go ahead and... It feels kind of shady or slimy putting my own video down in the description but just in case you want to see it as a reference because there's a lot of facts in it um yeah i'll do it just for the facts for the facts um you whatever game you used to play in ninth edition you could score 10 victory points freebie victory points if your army was fully painted and based now games workshop has their standard and then there's the perceived standard by everybody else and the perceived standard as well you'll see in the other video is um where there's a lot of issues now what i'm curious on is i haven't seen any mention of it is that going to be included in 10th edition tournaments or just in 10th edition tournament plays i think it was became a very messy thing it did help encourage people to paint and base their models which i applaud um, regardless of your skill levels you guys cranked them out you got it done which i'm very proud of i mean regardless of what you, how you feel about your own paint job i'm proud of you guys just for doing it right it's amazing that you guys did it congrats really i mean that's i i'm a i'm a the hobbyist side of this game um, or this this genre of games and the painter side and when you accomplish that I, I 
beam with pride like i'm proud papa um now one of the issues with that 10 points is how you look at it. now here's games workshop's take on it right games workshop was very ambiguous outside of saying that it had to be colored and this is the english way of spelling spelling colored which was uh, you toss a u in there and it had to be based so in the english sense and this is just i'm only going to put a couple tidbits from that my other video colored english english or queen's english is it queen's english let me know in the comments below um meant that it had one one uno or more colors that's it one or more colors now games workshop put out the grand tournament packet that showed examples of colored miniatures um, or painted miniatures sorry colored miniatures painted miniatures but at no point did they say you had to have xyz now here's where we get several issues the first issue is that a lot of tournaments for a very long time even during ninth edition said that primers do not count as a color nor do the shades or washes which is um, bs when they only it's it's only bs when they say this is the way gw says that's not true for their paints they consider shades and washes or shades or washes however you, whatever vernacular you use and primers as a color they are one of the colors whether you use an airbrush to put on um, the air paint mephist on red or you use a rattle can to put on the mephist on red it's the same color so not counting it uh, primer or the wash or shade which is thin down paint um, not as a color is wrong absolutely wrong right only when you're referencing games workshop if games workshop uh, if you're saying games workshop said that this is not a color that's wrong it is it's your standard so make sure that you're very clear about that i'm not saying that you can't put that as a standard but good luck on trying to identify and uh, identify that right so the other thing that people misidentify and misinterpret or just blatantly blame or say is games workshop's policy is that those guides that they have either three color minimum or using the tournament packet the grand tournament packet at, to describe how many colors are needed in that video i i show off all the different colors the the percentage differences and the um the the huge disparity in how many paints are used in games workshops examples so when people say oh just use this book as an example use the tournament book as an example it doesn't tell you how many paints are necessary all it says and i've covered that in that video it needs to be colored and based what's a color one or more colors for them so that's something to take into consideration moving forward tournament players um, and turn really tournament organizers do, are, are you doing your own rating system for those 10 victory points or are you going to use games workshop if you're going to use games workshop then you need to take it at rules as written which we like to use rules as written if you're going to use your own say hey guys here's our event description for earning those 10 battle points easy peasy that's the only thing that's my only real gripe is that i am on the fence with should this be included in earning your victory points i'd like it for the motivation of man we really got to get my stuff painted and based for this event because who wants to go to an event and where you spent hundreds of hours like the, the project i'm working on right now is going to be around an 800 hour project and then i show up and my opponent at this grand tournament has a gray plastic half put together army i don't want that i mean at least prime it and put some basing material on it i mean it's not that hard but i get it um so moving forward is games workshop going to include this um, i'm on the fence with it i really am because i understand the need and desire for to get people to a buy your paints and your product and everything to, to decorate and um, make it look good but i also 
and I also understand um, it's a motivation to uh, for uh, the hobbyist side of everything because that's what this is. It is a hobby. Uh, is it a sport? I don't know if it's a sport. You definitely sweat while you're at tournaments and stuff. I don't know if that's the standard for being a sporting event, but <laughs> maybe it'll show up on ESPN 8, the Ocho. We'll see. Uh, but on the flip side of all that, I understand one side. The other side is I think it's if you're going to include that, then there needs to be a clear standard, right? And Games Workshop won't do that because if they put a clear standard, then that's going to take um, people buying all their paints, all their contrast, all that stuff to make it easier or uh, to, to paint everything. They'll go from all that to... Oh, I only need three colors. Well, then I'm going to get black, brown, and gunmetal. That's it. I'm done. Or black, red, and gunmetal. Paint the eyes, paint the armor, paint the weapon. Done. Put some basic material on. Yay, I'm, I'm done. That's I, I, You don't want to do that for that loss of profit. But the forcing people to adopt one policy without giving clear directions on what the parameters for that pro policy is which i say they do others don't that's my issue and i think going forward especially if it's included in this edition right if it is included in this edition tournament organizers need to have a clear distinction between games workshops policy which is very clear watch that video down below make sure you hit the, the like button on that and um that the difference is the clear distinction between Games Workshop's uh, standards and your standards. And then there, there's no room for argument or discussion. If you say, hey, this is Warzone Houston's standards for earning your 10 points for any of the Games Workshop uh, tournaments, boom, done. You can't argue with that. There's no amb ambiguity. Um, if you're going to use the Games Workshop standard, then you need to understand what they're saying one or more colors and it needs to be based done that's it so what do you guys think about that how do you guys think about the scoring how do you think about being in a roundabout way forced to paint uh let me know in the description or down in the comments below and you guys have yourself a wonderful day see ya